Hey guys, this is Damien from Dame Tech back with another video. In this video, I'll be checking to see if there are any performance increases with the upcoming iOS 14.6 update. As of now, I'm currently testing with iOS 14.6 Beta 3. Also, for those of you who may be confused with all of the tech jargon, I added more detailed explanations in the description below. Nevertheless, before jumping into iOS 14.6 results, after reading many comments in my prior videos and seeing a number of iPhone owners report performance issues after updating their devices to iOS 14.5.1, I first wanted to investigate the claims. I wanted to see if iOS 14.5.1 is actually severely throttling the performance of both the iPhone 11 and iPhone 12 series as many have reported. Based on my test results, both my iPhone 11 and iPhone 12 Pro Max seem to experience extreme throttling issues which led to lower than usual benchmark scores and slower performance in mobile games or CPU intensive applications. Based on my research, this issue only seems to affect a limited number of iPhones running iOS 14.5.1. As you can see, starting with Geekbench 5, a CPU benchmark application, while testing iOS 14.5.1 for single core performance, my iPhone 12 Pro Max scored 1,171, which again, as you can see, is 35% lower than the average scores for the iPhone 12 Pro Max devices. As for the multi-core score performance, we are seeing my device score 2,116 which is almost 100% slower than the average iPhone 12 Pro Max devices. iOS 14.5.1 is definitely having some issues and thus throttling the performance of this device so much that its performance is on par with the iPhone XR, which was released in 2018. Now for the good, as we can see on the right with iOS 14.6, everything is back to normal as both single core and multi-core scores are back to their respective numbers. In fact, it seems with iOS 14.6, I scored slightly higher on both single core and multi-core scores compared to the average scores of the iPhone 12 Pro Max devices. All in all, after updating to iOS 14.6, I definitely noticed a major performance increase when using CPU intensive applications. Nevertheless, now if we look at the 3D Mark benchmark application, which tests the GPU performance of this device, again with iOS 14.5.1 and the new Wildlife Extreme Stress Test that just released this month, we are still seeing performance issues with this update. Out of this 20 minute test, for the best peak GPU loop score, I scored 832, while the lowest loop GPU score, I scored 750 with iOS 14.5.1. Now, as we look to the right with iOS 14.6, the best loop score is 2,411, while the lowest loop score is 1,847. These GPU scores are almost three times faster than the GPU scores produced in iOS 14.5.1. This is a great representation of just how much the performance was throttled down in iOS 14.5.1. For instance, when running Genshin Impact, which is a pretty demanding mobile game, the performance dropped down to 30 frames per second average with iOS 14.5.1 and went back up to 58 frames per second average with iOS 14.6. Nevertheless, to be brief, as for the iPad Pro 2020 variant, I did not notice a drastic change in performance when comparing both CPU and GPU benchmark test results between iOS 14.5.1 and iOS 14.6 Beta 3. My CPU scores from Geekbench 5 are practically the same across all iOS updates, starting with iOS 14.5 
to iOS 14.6. This also applies to the GPU performance. Hence, both iOS 14.5.1 and iOS 14.6 produce similar GPU results in the new 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme 20 Minute Stress Test. Thus, for those with the 2020 iPad Pro, don't expect any performance increases or changes when updating your device to iOS 14.6. With all of this being said, thanks again for watching and all the support you've shown in these past five months. I definitely appreciate all the amazing feedback you've all provided. Please stay tuned for my iPad Pro 2021 review coming next week. Definitely let me know in the comments what type of tests you would like to see for this device. I've gotten lucky and it seems I'll have my hands on this device May 21st. If you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe as I buy and test all of these devices with my own money. Please stay safe and see you next time.